Here we're making one more video about dollar weighted and time weighted rates of return before we get into some other stuff that's more conceptually challenging. But I thought it was worth doing one more problem where we will be finding in this case the unknown rate of return that is both a dollar weighted rate of return for one fund and time weighted for a second fund. The algebra turns out to be a bit nasty in this one. And in fact, I kept making mistakes when I was working on this before I made this video. So hopefully I'll make this video without any mistakes. So here's the situation. You're given the following information about two different investment accounts, account K and account L. Both account fund value before given activities of withdrawals or deposits uh, over the course of a year, 2015. You can see these dates here. This is halfway through the year. This is three quarters of the way through the year. This is halfway through the year there. During 2015, the dollar weighted or money weighted return for investment account K equals the time weighted return for investment account L, which equals I. The goal is to calculate I. And again, like I said, the algebra ends up being a bit nasty, so we have to be careful here. All right, uh, I think for account K, it's worthwhile to make a timeline of the uh, deposits and withdrawals time 0, time 0.5, time 0.75, and time 1. You've got the deposit essentially at time 0 of 100, a withdrawal of x at time 1 half, halfway through the year, a deposit of 2x at time 0.75, so I'll put 100 on negative x, it's a withdrawal there, and 2x. That helps you see how much time those are in the account, a full year for the first one, half a year for this one, and one-fourth of a year for the last one. So our equation of value for a dollar-weighted or money-weighted rate of return based on using simple interest would be that 100 times 1 plus i minus x times 1 plus 0.5i plus 2x times 1 plus 0.25i, right? If it's at 0.75, you've got a quarter of a year left equals the final balance of 125 right there at time one. That would be the equation of value for this one. I could also write down an equation giving us what i is for the second one in terms of x. The goal is to solve for i. So if you think about it, in each case, if you could solve the resulting equation for x in terms of i, you can set those results equal to each other and hopefully solve for i. Say that again. Since the goal is to calculate i, we've got an equation relating x and i here. I could solve for x in terms of i here, and also based on account L, set those things equal to each other because they both equal x, solve the resulting equation for i. Let's go ahead and simplify this before we think about account L. This becomes 100 plus 100i minus x minus 0.5xi and then plus 2x plus 2 times 0.25 is 0.5xi. Those two things cancel. Equals 125. This will simplify to what here? We want to get it in terms of x. We want to solve for x. We've got negative x plus 2x is x. We've got 125 minus 100 is 25. And then we've got 100i there that we can subtract from both sides to get that x is 25 minus 100i. So that's how x depends on i in the first situation. Now let's go to account L. Doesn't matter that this withdrawal is halfway through the year. With time weighted, I think about the growth factors. The account grows from 100 to 125 during that first time period before that withdrawal. So the growth factor is 125 over 100. And then after the withdrawal, uh, the final balance at the end of the year is 105.8. The balance right after that withdrawal is going to be 125 minus x. Subtracting 1 from this gives me the time-weighted rate of return, and that also equals i. I want to solve this for x so that I can set it equal to this, and then ultimately solve for i. This is the same as 5 fourths. 5 times 105.8. is 529, so this becomes 529 over 4 times 125 is 500, minus 4x, minus 1, add 1 to both sides, 529 over 500 
minus 4x equals 1 plus i. My goal is to solve for x. I can multiply both sides by 500 minus 4x and divide both sides by 1 plus i. 529 over 1 plus i will equal 500 minus 4x. I can then add 4x to both sides, or, well, okay, subtract 500 from both sides and then divide everything by negative 4, say. 500 divided by negative 4, or negative 500 divided by negative 4 is going to be positive 125. And then I'll divide this thing by negative 4. 529 divided by 4 is 132.25, so I'll get a negative 132.25 over 1 plus i after dividing everything by negative 4. So it's these two things that are going to now be set equal to each other. And I'm going to get a quadratic equation in i that I can then solve for i probably with the quadratic formula. So set those equal to each other. 25 minus 100i equals 125 minus 132.25 over 1 plus i. Um, nice thing here actually that happens that I see is if you subtract 125 from both sides, it actually turns out pretty nice here because you're going to get a negative 100 minus 100i on the left. And you're going to be able to cancel the negative signs. All those negative signs will cancel. Then factor out 100 on the left. You'll get 100 times 1 plus i equals 132.25 over 1 plus i. We can avoid the quadratic formula here. I can then multiply both sides by 1 plus i and divide both sides by 100. I'm going to get 1 plus i squared equals 132.25 divided by 100 is 1.3225. This will be quicker than the quadratic formula. I want to take the positive square root. 1 plus i is the positive square root of 1.3225, which turns out to be a pretty nice number, actually. Take the square root of this thing, you get 1.15. i is therefore 0.15, and that is the correct answer. If you didn't happen to see that subtracting 125 here and then dividing everything by negative 1 gives you something nice that you can solve quickly without the quadratic formula. You still could use the quadratic formula. You could, for example, here multiply everything by 1 plus i and get 25 minus 100i times 1 plus i equals 125 times 1 plus i, and then the 1 plus i would cancel there. So you get this, you'd have to expand this out right there, you'd have to rearrange, use the quadratic formula, you should get the same answer, okay? Um, but this was a nice observation to get to the answer more quickly, but do, do take the time to confirm that if you simplify this and use the quadratic formula that you do get the same answer.